Generating text messages can be a huge advantage based off of a fault for any automation system. Let me show how easy they actually can be. First step is we're going to create a new project. We're going to accept a default name and ultimately what we're doing is just creating a project container for the system that we're about to bring into this project. Next step is device configuration, add new device, go pick and choose something called the unspecified S7-1200 CPU click add. So we're going to take the project container and a hardware container that actually doesn't have any part number associated with it, add these two together and bring up the project view. So the next thing you see is we have a little pop-up box here. If I click the detect button, I'm going to go out and scan the Profinet network real quick. I'm going to try to find that IP address and bring it into this little pop-up box. Now that I see the correct IP address for the CPU, click detect again. This time we'll scan the network and find the correct part numbers for the CPU, the signal modules, including even the communication modules of which we have a GPRS module for this particular project. Okay, so what we physically have now is the actual correct hardware. We didn't have to use the catalog whatsoever to pick and choose all the piece parts. We're ready to actually change an attribute and move on. Next step. If we go give focus to the GPRS module, click properties. Now we have a couple things here we need to choose. For this particular GPRS module, I've already added the SIM card to it, so now we need to put the pin physically in for him, and it happens to be 820601. You have to do it twice, 820601. Next thing we have to add is we actually have to put in the correct uh, phone number for the service provider for creating these SMS messages that go back and forth. So in this instance, I need to do plus four nine seven two. Okay, so the first step for that is now complete. We can move on to the GPRS access. One thing we have here is we need to add the actual provider's uh, web address so that we can make certain that we've made a connection to their SMS server. So that happens to be a web dot Vodafone.de. And last but not least, go and physically look and see what hard hardware identifier we've been given from this actual configuration. It happens to be 277. Just remember that for later. So the next step is we want to actually go give focus to the PLC, click the download button, and ultimately if you think about what we've been able to do is we're able to scan the Profinet network, find this physical hardware, including this new GPRS module, with all the other signal modules and all we had to do was change the attributes and click on the download and we have a fully functional system on the cellular network at the same time. You'll see that we do have an antenna over here and the system is actually loading right now. Um, here in just a few moments we'll get some green lights all the way across the board when I click start all and finish and you can see it did find the web server from the service provider and then once he's finished with that, he's actually going to look for this antenna. He's going to physically find the cellular network as well. Now he's found it. Last but not least, he'll find the web server again and we have a fully functional system on the actual infrastructure in the local area. Okay, so the next step for this is we need to go on to the program blocks. So let's choose libraries. We actually have the ability to take tags, data blocks, function blocks, in fact, hardware configurations, you can test it, prove it, make certain that it's going to work for your application. And at that point, you can save the global, li global library, reuse it over and over and again. That way you create engineering efficiencies in your daily work. So let's do exactly that. The next step is let me open the global library. Here's the GPRS data block. Let me pull it into the program blocks, drag and drop it in. Now that it's here, in order for me to use it, I have to compile that block. This is going to be for the physical phone number we're going to send the SMS to or text message as well as the actual text itself. The compilation is done now. So let me double click on the GPRS data block. Let me expand it. And if you remember when we did the hardware configuration of the GPRS module, we had a hardware identifier of 277. So now we have our data block complete. All we have to do is hit the compile button. 
So you can see down here in this bottom field, we have compiled the block and we're ready to move forward. The next step is we actually want to create the actual cyclic call or the call for this particular SMS. And we're going to do that in main OB1. Double click on main OB1. Now I physically have it. Go down to communications, GPS, TCON. Go grab the block, drop it in. Accept the default data block, that's not a problem. And then we want to do a T send. So one's a T connection, one's a T send. Accept the default for this one as well. So the next thing I want to do is I have two tags for the two inputs for this particular uh, system that we're creating here. If I just go to my global library, let's go grab our tags here called GPS sim tags. Drag it into our project, let go. So we have one tag is for send. We have another one for connection and go back to the ID for the connection block and we just need to have a one right here. Then it's the identifier of the 277 for the GPS module. And then something else that we can do here, we're actually going to do a split screen with the data block that we just created because we're going to use that data block with these calls. Go grab the config. I'm going to drag and drop this to the, the connection block. Now our connection block is complete. We can move on to the send block. Go to ID. Click 1. The hardware identifier 277. The length is 160. And then I'm going to do something here a little bit different. I'm going to create an actual pointer. That way we can have just the text message and, and no header or footer that's not supposed to be there. I can do that just by typing this out. Uh, P hash db1.dbx34.0 space yte160. So now our sim block is complete. All we have to do is give focus to the CPU, downloaded the whole system. Let's do that right now. Download. Ultimately at this point he is going to compile the entire project. Once he's finished compiling, click load and we have a fully functional system. At this point, if I come over here, flip my connect block bit, and then my send bit. So basically, I've generated potentially some type of fault at the local remote station. And if I come over here to my cell phone, there's the text message. And that's engineering efficiency.